So today's video is gonna be super weird. You ready for this? We're gonna be talking about how you can manifest what you want or don't want through curiosity. What the heck are we talking about? I got a message to share with all of you. And it was <laughs> during a time where I was trying to figure out like, how can I manifest more effectively? Um, because I, I knew that a lot of my, my fears and worries we're making things come to fruition. That's not a new concept. We all know that, right? But then I was given an understanding about some of the things that have happened in this world. And if you guys don't know, I'm an angelic medium and that's how I get a lot of my messages. Believe it or don't, I don't really care. You can call whatever you want, okay? If you're not comfortable with the word angel, you know, whatever, okay? So anyway, I <laughs> get this message that during the things that they're really cracking down on are words. So I'm sorry, you don't like it, go change the system. Don't come at me, okay, thank you. Um, but the things that have been happening over the past couple of years, they came and zeroed in on me. And I understood, because I started remembering how much fear I was in, how isolated I felt because I was away from my family, uh, and how I kept thinking, I wonder, what this is gonna turn into. How bad is this gonna get? Oh God, am I doing enough? I don't think I'm doing enough. I feel so helpless. I don't feel like I can help people. I, you know what I mean? So that is where we start really looking at everything. Let's start with world events. Anything that occurs. If you have a curiosity about how did that person manage this? Or God, I wonder what it would look like to have this happen. You're manifesting it. There's a, another way that this can affect you. I, I have a real interest in psychology, human behavior, all of that. Okay. And on occasion, when I really prep myself, I will watch a true crime something. Okay. Uh, Joe Kenda, I may have met him. I'm not sure if I did. There used to be a coffee house at the Ivy Wild School. And it, I hadn't seen the show at that time. It was only when I was looking back, I'm like, was he the guy that was telling me about the pastries on Sunday morning? Cause it kind of looks like him and he kind of acted like him, you know? So I don't know if I actually met him. If I did, hi, if you see this, hi. Um, but every once in a while, just because I, I want to understand how people are functioning. I make sure I cleanse myself afterwards. You know, I do all my spiritual stuff afterwards. But if we're not careful, if that's all you're ever taking in, and especially as we're coming up, as of the recording of this, we're coming up on Halloween season here. Um, and, and that's another thing. You gotta be careful <laughs> what words are on, you know, on your welcome mat. Yeah, I took my welcome mat away from my door. Now I have one out there that says, I hope you brought pie. Literally, it says that. I hope you brought pie. Because if you didn't, you're going to mess around and find out, <laughs> okay? Don't you be coming in here without being invited, okay? So <laughs> be very careful with that because it is the curiosity that will drag you into something that perhaps you cannot handle. We'll just start with the bad stuff first, so forgive me. We'll get to the good stuff too. But when, when you think, oh my gosh, I wonder how bad this is going to get. Or when you think, oh, can I be powerful by messing with potions and spells and you don't know what you're doing. You're not, that's not your regular practice. You haven't consulted with somebody who could be a proper teacher for you. <sighs> it's a mess around and find out kind of moment. Now, how could, oh, and putting that before we move on, putting that out into the collective, Right. So when we, going back to the example I was giving what happened two years, for two years, um, you know, I think a lot of us were curious because this was history in the making. What is this going to be? What does that mean? And collectively, we put this energy into, I'm even hearing now, it's like you wanted to find out. Now, I'm not saying that it was all of us who made that happen necessarily. I don't, I don't know the mind of God, source creator. I, I don't know. Check with me tomorrow. If I get a download, I'll share it with you. But, but I don't know what that all was. I just know that this was the messaging that we, there was a part of that. Yes. So when we believe that, you know, we're, we're not going to have 
um, financial security, when we believe that we're not going to have love, when, you know, it's not as simple as that. Like, let's go with the love thing. If we believe we're not going to have love, yeah, that can push love out. But if you look at social media, and I love that this is happening, so many, let's just say heterosexual women, just as for our example here, they're coming out and saying, I'm going to stay single until I am respected. We're going to stay single until we stop getting abused. We're going to stay single until we're treated like humans. That is, okay, I'm not, like, I'm one of those people. Like, I was just thinking about this. I was making breakfast. And I was sitting there, I was, like, opening the freezer. I kid you not, I'm in these, like, pajamas with, like, coffee cups and, <laughs> like, bright orange. And uh, making my breakfast, my breakfast. And it just sort of occurred to me that, oh, my God, how many times I've had a guy come at me and it was like, I choose you. And I'm like, so? And they're like, but I choose you. And some of them were wealthy, powerful people. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> I think I was just a little empathy security blanket or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, they kept coming at me and they were like shocked that like, <laughs> but I said I chose you. Aren't you honored? No, you nasty. I don't, <laughs> I don't have anything to do with you. I don't like your attitude, okay? You, I don't like how you treat women. I don't like how you show up, you know? You can pretend to be a good person, but at the end of the day, you can't fool the energy field. You can't fool and, and fake a frequency. You're either there or you're not, right? Let's talk about how this could work out in a good way. Uh, if you are curious, I wonder what a business for myself would be like. I wonder how happy I could be just enjoying everything that already is. I wonder what blessings are around the corner. We hear this all the time, and I bet a lot of you are sitting there going, Michelle, are you kidding me with this? This, is this dumb video, okay? <laughs> I get it, because we talk about this stuff all the time. But manifestation, I, in Louise Hay, I love Louise Hay. God bless her on the other side. Um, maybe she's hanging out with Dolores Cannon. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I like to think so because they're both pretty cool ladies. But, you know, I really love listening to affirmations. There was a time when affirmations were not going to work for me. Why? Because I didn't believe it. I had a lot of healing to do. I had a lot of restoring faith in myself before any affirmations would work. So if you are doing affirmations and it's not coming to fruition, first of all, you gotta give it a little time. You can't go, I'm a, I'm a gazillion, I'm a gazillion, I'm a gazillion, and then you go check and see, check your bank account, see if the gazillion's in there. It don't work like that, okay? Like you have to maintain that frequency. Make sense? So as we go forward, the reason why I really felt like it was important to do this video there are scary things happening all the time. There are things where people are taking their uh, insanity and they have power. And so they're going to make us all suffer for their ego. And if we all get into this collective energy of, oh my gosh, what would happen if dot, 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 it will happen. Now, I'm not in any way, shape, or form saying don't be prepared for like, you know, a hurricane or any kind of emergency, a natural disaster or otherwise. Be ready, you know, be ready. Have a plan for your family to get to safety. I personally love Ryan Hall, y'all. I got a Nader, I think it's called Nader Juice. Is that what it is? I got one of those t-shirts. It was, you know, kind of part of a fundraiser for the victims of Hurricane Ian. But I'm going to wear that in a video at some point. I definitely will. It was such a cool shirt. But you guys got to subscribe to Ryan Hall, y'all. He goes live when there's major weather events. And he has saved so many lives. He really has. And he seems like a cool guy. I don't know him personally, but he seems like a really cool guy. So make sure you check that out. But yeah, like just being prepared, making sure like you're not doing so out of fear, but out of like focus. 
right? Just being focused. Okay, this is, this is the thing that's happening right now. We've got to deal with it. Which brings me to the last part of this message. If when things are happening, you're already, you're already seeing it playing out. Now you can't go, I wonder what it'd be like to not be in the middle of this crisis. I, not time, sis. Okay, move, 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 go. Or shut the windows. I don't know what, what's happening for you, right? So that's not the time to do it. But definitely don't get into a victimhood mentality. Not only will that get you slow and sluggish and scrambled, and now you're not doing what's necessary to get yourself to safety. Uh, but, you know, you want to stay calm, I guess is what I'm saying. So take this into consideration. Listen to this video a few times if you need to. Share it with your friends. Yes, of course, it helps me out and it supports my channel. But I want to, I want to reach other people and see... Was there ever a time, and I'll pose this question to all of you to leave your answer in the comments. Was there ever a time where you were like, I wonder what, ha what would happen if this, this, and this came to fruition, and then it did? We started seeing this with food shortages. What would happen if we couldn't just go to the grocery store and get whatever we needed? And then all of a sudden it started happening, and people were like, okay, this is ridiculous, especially here in the United States. This is ridiculous. We can figure out a way. People start growing their own food, probably feeling very positive about it because now all of a sudden there was nothing, at least right now, nothing that was missing from the grocery store. Give it some thought. This might sound really weird. You might say, I don't know what you're talking about. But if you sit with it, if you think about it, and then come on back to this video, watch it again, see what your response is, leave your comments down below. I love you all so much. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.